Let's quickly and easily make a ChatGPT app in Android Studio. To do that, we'll ask ChatGPT to provide the code and we'll implement, run, test, and debug that code until it works. And then we can chat with ChatGPT in our Android app. Let's get started. As you may already know, you can already chat with ChatGPT with the ChatGPT app on your mobile device. But what if you wanted to incorporate a ChatGPT interface into your own app that you made from scratch in an app where you could chat with ChatGPT just like you could on the app or the desktop and have the same kind of text answers that you would expect from ChatGPT chatbot. Well, now you can. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I made a basic Android app that has an interface with ChatGPT that sends and receives messages to and from OpenAI through its API using my API key and libraries such as Retrofit. If you wanna make your own ChatGPT interface in your app, you would need to do something similar and get your own API key, which would require getting an account on OpenAI. The point would not be to replicate the ChatGPT app, but to put the ability to talk with ChatGPT inside your app, which presumably would do other things. But for demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna make an app that just has the interface. So that means making a new project in Android Studio, selecting an empty activity, and making a layout with a text view, edit, text for the user to input text and a button, all of which are referenced in the Kotlin code by their IDs. I set the background color to the same color on chat.openai.com and replicated the text such as how can I help you today and message ChatGPT. OpenAI, please do not sue me for copyright or trademark infringement. So I tested my app as it was and after a bunch of tweaking, I got it to look how I wanted and how the layout appeared fine. That was the easy part. The hard part is getting it to actually send and receive a message from OpenAI. At this point, like in my other videos, I'll point out that I'm getting this code from ChatGPT. This requires providing a clear instructions in the prompt and pasting any errors you get after using the code it gives you. I'm always using ChatGPT model for by default until it inevitably kicks me off for sending and receiving more than 40 messages in a three hour period. But the 3.5 model can be helpful as well. This is the code I have so far on the screen. added the necessary dependencies in the build.gradle file. I set up the Android manifest file properly. I imported everything I needed to import, which there is quite a bit. Sometimes you can do a quick import when it's suggested when an error pops up, but other times you would have to explicitly import something by writing or pasting the import statement. I'm using Kotlin because Android Studio is set up for it by default and it's just easier. So the main activity is mainactivity.kt, not .java. In the onCreate method, it sets a content view by setting content view by id r.layout.activity underscore main and initializes the UI text and button elements by find, find view by id for all three. Of course, for the button to be able to do anything, it needs an on click listener function, which waits for a click and then does something. In this case, it sends a message that the user had typed in the edit text field. So that was the harder stuff. And the even harder part is correctly linking OpenAI to have a real conversation with ChatGPT 3.5. For that, you need an API key. This is a separate from GPT Plus, and you have to set up billing separately, which I learned. You buy credits and have the option to auto, auto renew credits. Your regular $20 a month does not cover this. I bought $5 worth just to test it. After some errors and debugging, I finally got my app to successfully tell me a lame joke. The model seems to be 2.5, not 3.5, because it couldn't really hold a conversation for some reason. Through no fault of my app, I believe, but I could be wrong. Before I succeeded, there were several failures. For starters, I didn't realize I needed to buy credits for this to work, and I incorrectly thought I still had free trial credits. So check your credits on your API page, which is platform.openai.com slash API dash keys. I had the endpoint URL wrong at first. The base URL is openai.com. But later in the code, you set the specific URL, which will be v1 slash chat slash completions. I also could not connect with OpenAI in the emulated device, possibly because of its network connection settings. But my app worked fine on my physical device, though at first there were some issues, such as the ability to see the chat history, including my own messages, in a long scroll field instead of the text being replaced with each answer. 
but that was up to me to implement. Also, that would be out of the scope of this video, which is about just making an app that lets you talk to ChatGPT, and we have succeeded. Here's the code at the end. It should work for you, but you'll have to put in your API key. The layout shows a basic setup of a text field, which will be changed when the bot answers, an edit text field with a text hint, and a submit button. If you want, you can use an image button of an up arrow if you want the authentic ChatGPT experience. This is the Kotlin code on the screen. As usual, it references the layout, sets the content view, references the elements in the layout by ID. This app makes use of the library's retrofit and OKHTTP, OK which do the heavy lifting of connecting to the API and sending and receiving the messages through your network. Much of the actual work the app will be doing for you will happen in the button's on-click listener, which makes sense considering that's really all this app does, send a message and wait for a reply. It sets up the API service using retrofit, initializes variables such as the user input. It sets up the JSON structure. The API call is made with debug statements and toast messages if something goes wrong. Your API key is set up here. In the intercept function, the request is sent with a header. It's important to set all this up to OpenAI specifications. For example, the header must be authorization bearer API key. At the bottom, you'll set up a data class, which includes variables such as ID, message, etc. As I said earlier, your reasons for using ChatGPT in the app will vary. You aren't trying to simply recreate the ChatGPT app. You're actually using it to talk to ChatGPT. You can, for example, use OpenAI's chatbot to be your customer service chatbot or an NPC in a game. You can do this by providing the chatbot very specific instructions in the code, just like you would send a specific prompt in the ChatGPT desktop interface or mobile interface. But that's out of the scope of this video. The code for this ChatGPT chatbot app will be in the description. You will need to put in your own API key or it will not work. Also be sure to put in internet permissions in the Android manifest and make sure you're abiding by OpenAI's terms of service when using their API. So that's it for this video. I hope to make an app that makes efficient and interesting use of this ChatGPT interface, such as making it an NPC in a game. This could be useful if you don't want to build your own chat bot from scratch, which is also doable, which we shall see in a future video. So thank you for watching. Thanks for subscribing for more helpful content, and I will see you in the next video.